Hi friends, I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between a master's thesis and a PhD thesis. And essentially if you are doing a master's degree or PhD degree, these documents are going to form a significant part of your thesis. So let's get on with that. I'm going to discuss five key differences and then probably I'll discuss a bonus point. So let's start with the first issue, which is the level of contribution. Now, essentially in a PhD thesis, it is expected that you have found something new and therefore your contribution adds something which is quite new and significant to the current literature in the field. In the case of a master's thesis, it can be something new, but it typically is an extension of a previous work. So let me give you an example for this. For example, let's say you are doing some work in numerical computation and there are a plethora of papers which have used polynomial basis functions to solve a certain numerical problem. And you do some literature review and some thinking and figure out that, hey, maybe you could use radial basis functions to solve this problem and it may be better. And you do some numerical experiments and you prove this fact. So once you prove this fact, maybe you get a 15 to 20 percent improvement over polynomials as far as the convergence speed is concerned. You can probably write a paper, you could write a master's thesis based on this work, create a large number of results, simulations, diagrams, figures and so on and put this document together as a master's thesis. Now in contrast, if you want to get a PhD thesis, you could look at some problem. So firstly, the problem has to be somewhat more deep and broad in many senses. So maybe you find that a lot of people have done deterministic simulations, but very few people have looked at the fact that material properties are themselves random variable. And therefore you go around and find that different type of distributions can be used to model material properties. Maybe these are normal distributions, maybe they are log normal distributions and so on. And so you do a large number of simulations and you prove this to be the case. You prove that some of the discrepancy which has been happening between experimental results and between simulations may be because of the randomness of the material properties and not necessarily because of you have missed out some physical aspects of the simulation. Maybe you perform some experiments to buttress this concept. So at the end of this problem, you would probably have enough material to write a PhD thesis. So essentially that's the main point and it's a hard point to differentiate. So what I would say is that there may be master's thesis which have done a significant amount of new contribution that would of course go through with any committee. But the vice versa may not be true that if you have a PhD thesis which is just a minor extension of some previous work then most likely the committee members and your own professor is not going to accept that this is worthy of a PhD thesis. Now let's let's look at point number two which is publications and papers. Now typically in a PhD it's expected that at least one journal paper will come out of your thesis and most PhD theses do produce maybe two to three or two to five journal papers. Some exceptional theses may have more than that. Now in a master's thesis it's typically not expected that your work results in a journal publications but many master's thesis can be written up as conference papers and some can produce one or more journal paper. That of course depends on the student and his supervisor. So that's the point number two is that how much publishable literature you generate from the thesis and this is a measure of how new your work is. So again that's something which differentiates the master's and the PhD thesis. Now let's look at point three which is the review process. Now typically a master's thesis is reviewed in-house in the department. It may be reviewed by your professor and his colleague or a couple of colleagues or something like that. There may be a committee of two to three people to review your master's thesis. Now in the case of a PhD the committee will be larger. If it's a committee within your department it may be five people. There may be a person from a different department also, so this is the external. In some countries your PhD will be sent out for review, so especially if you are in Europe and some other parts of the world, your thesis is going to go out to a different university, maybe even a different country. 
and it's going to be reviewed there. So the PhD thesis is taken very seriously and therefore the review process is quite rigorous. Now one thing you will see is that the same set of examiners are going to review a PhD thesis with a much greater level of rigor and even harshness compared to a master's thesis because essentially when you are doing a PhD you are seeking to get into that collegium or that group of people or that cult which is one they belong to. So essentially you are trying to say that I am as good as the professors because most of them do have PhDs. So generally the review process of a PhD thesis is much more difficult and there are pretty harsh reviews and so on. Now the next thing is the size of the PhD thesis. So typically I would say PhD thesis may range from 100 pages to 200 pages. The length would depend on your particular discipline. So if you are in something like mathematics and humanities, maybe it is going to be on the shorter side. If you are in some of the domains where a large number of figures and tables are brought out, in those cases your thesis is going to be on the longer side. Now typically the master's thesis is likely to be much smaller. It may be 50 page to 100 page, something like that. And the number of chapters in the master's thesis is also going to be less. So PhD thesis may have maybe six to seven chapters, master's thesis may have three to four chapters. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the next issue is time and the PhD thesis would take you about three to six years to write. So this includes the process of doing the research about doing the preliminary coursework, taking part in the research training program and so on, going to conferences and all the other work you need to do as part of your PhD. And the total time of writing this thesis is at the end of the process is something like five years or so. So that's a large amount of time to spend in writing the document. And it's not the document which matters so much, but the person you become in the process of writing this document, the amount of knowledge that you learn, that is the key part about the PhD thesis. Now, the master's thesis typically takes one to two years. Sometimes it can stretch up to three years, but it is typically much less in terms of the time taken. So in fact, I often believe that the master's degree is a very compact degree if you want to learn how to do research and strengthen some of the aspects of your bachelor's degree in which you are weak. So in case that is your point and you straight away want to join industry, the master's thesis is a very good document to write. And you can finish this degree in one, two, three years. So. If you now look at the whole comparison and we try to create some math out of it, I would say the master's thesis would be maybe one fourth to one third of a PhD thesis. So this is in terms of the total contribution, the total time taken, the total size and so on. Now there are some guys who write master's thesis which come up to the level of a PhD in many universities, but this is a rare thing. This is not ne necessarily the case. And in case you are finding that your master's thesis is becoming very good, the problem you have seized on is very fertile, what I would suggest is that if it's possible, you can convert to the PhD option. So there are many universities which actually permit people with four-year bachelor's degree to do a direct PhD. And in case you and your supervisor find that you have hit on a gold mine as far as research is concerned, you can ask the chairman and dean and there may be possibility of taking permission and converting this to a PhD degree because in that case you are going to directly get a PhD degree. Now these are some of the points I had about uh, the MS thesis versus the PhD thesis. So I hope these points will help you in your quest for these degrees in the future. So I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.